Welcome to the dissection of the shoulder. Okay, the objectives as we dissect the shoulder, of course, is to identify the muscles and remember their actions. We're also going to identify the dorsoscapular ligament in the horse and state its functional significance. We're going to compare and contrast the superficial radial nerve of the horse with the canine and the bovine. And of course, with each nerve that we encounter, we want to consider the muscles that would atrophy and the actions lost due to damage to that nerve. And so, we'll consider that with the radial nerve here. Okay, so here we've got an image where we've reflected the skin off the shoulder and the thorax. We see here the cutaneous trunchi muscle. It's a little more extensive and it can be quite thick in some of these animals, but it does extend over the shoulder to produce what we call the cutaneous omobrachialis muscle. Now, as we reflect the cutaneous trunchi muscle, we want to watch here for the junction of the cutaneous trunchi muscle and the deep pectoralis muscle, which will be about here. You'll find that in some of these animals, those muscles tend to come together and fuse, but we will find that the cutaneous trunchi muscle fibers are going to be running in the craniovental direction, whereas those of the deep pectoralis muscle will be more in the caudoventral direction. So you look for those muscle fiber directions to find that junction. At that junction, we're going to find a prominent vein here. This is the superficial thoracic vein, also known as a spur vein. If you think about it, that's about where the cowboy spurs would be sitting as he rides. Of course, along with this vein, we can't see it here, but there are some branches of the lateral thoracic nerve. And if you recall, the lateral thoracic nerve is going to innervate the cutaneous trunchi muscle. Okay, so now here we've reflected the cutaneous muscles and we've cleaned the fascia so that we have exposed the trapezius muscle. Remember, it has both a cervical and a thoracic portion. We have the latissimus dorsi muscle. About here, we can palpate the spine of the scapula, giving us the infraspinatus ventral caudal to that. The deltoideus muscle, remember, overlies the infraspidatus somewhat. Its aponeurosis kind of blends into the covering of that muscle. The triceps brachii muscle here, primarily the long head. Okay, now we have reflected the latissimus dorsi muscle caudally, and we've also reflected the trapezius muscle ventrally. Make sure you do not cut its attachment to the spine of the scapula, otherwise it'll just fall off. Here we now see deep to the trapezius muscle is the rhomboideus muscle. Remember, it attaches to the medial surface of the dorsal scapula. There's a splenius muscle, makes up a large portion of the neck. We see the serratus ventralis muscle, both the cervical and the thoracic portion. Subclavius muscle, one we do not encounter in the dog. It's going to be sitting on the cranial aspect of the supraspinous muscle. We'll mention the subclavius a little later again. Okay, now if we cut and reflect the rhomboideus muscle, as we have here, we're going to see a very thick and collagenous structure, which fuses to the surface of the thoracolumbar fascia, attaching to the third, fourth, and fifth th thoracic spines. This is the dorsoscapular ligament. It does, in fact, give origin to multiple muscles, such as the rhomboideus, the splenius, and the semi spinalis capitis muscles. Its importance, however, in the horse can be better visualized if we look at this illustration here. So here we have the dorsoscapular ligament. You see here it's running deep to the rhomboideus muscle. 
and then you're going to see that it also sends multiple fossicles through the serratus ventralis muscle to attach to the scapula. We will actually be able to see these as when we cut the serratus ventralis muscle and remove the limb. This distal portion is more elastic and so that when the limb hits the ground upon concussion we're going to see that it functions in shock absorption and then it's also going to restrict the range of the dorsal movement of the scapula during concussion. Okay, something else I want to demonstrate here is up here we've got the supraspinous bursa which sits above the second thoracic spine as well as often the third and fourth. Sometimes these become abscessed and fistulous withers. With this sometimes we can get that infection continuing down fascial tracts around the muscles like this. I've seen it where it has extended through fascial tracts all the way down to the ventral abdomen. Okay, so here back to the shoulder of the horse. We've reflected the brachiocephalic and omotransversarius muscles here. See the subclavius once again, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and here we've got better isolated the deltoideus muscle. Remember that the horse does not have an acromial process, so there's no acromial portion to the deltoideus muscle. Sometimes students will make a separation right about here. Try not to do that because remember there is no acromial head. There's generally just one head of the deltoideus. Okay, we can also see here the long head of the triceps brachii. And right about there is the division for the lateral head. Okay, here's a picture where we've reflected the deltoideus muscle. And this exposes branches of the axillary nerve and the caudal circumflex humoral artery. Remember that in the dog. Yeah, we found them going right into the deltoideus muscle. Okay, so to the bovine now. We've cut and reflected the cutaneous trunchi. We've also reflected the brachiocephalic and omotransversarius muscles here. There's the trapezius muscle, similar to the dog and the horse, latissimus dorsi. Supraspinatus muscle, infraspinatus muscle. There's the deltoideus. Now, deltoideus in the bovine is similar to that in the dog in that we do have an acromial head. There's a long head and the lateral head of the triceps brachii. Now notice in this image I did not point out to you subclavius muscle because the subclavius muscle is much reduced in the bovine. Let's look at it in the next image. Okay, so here what we've done is we've cut and reflected the brachiocephalic muscle. We're going to find a very small muscle right here which originates from the cartilage of the first rib and then attaches to the medial surface of the brachiocephalic. That is the much reduced subclavius muscle in the bovine. Okay, here we can also see very nicely the superficial cervical lymph node of the bovine. Okay, remember in these lymph nodes, bovine is going to be nice and large, equine is going to be multiple small. Okay, back to the shoulder of the horse. Looking now at the infraspinatus muscle, what we've done here is cut and reflected the distal portion to expose the infraspinatus bursa, which sits on the caudal part of the greater tubercle. Sometimes you can get shoulder lameness if there's severe adduction of the limb or trauma, usually crashing through a gate that's not totally opened or something. So you traumatize that bursa and the horse may hold its limb abducted, so a little bit away from the midline than usual. And if we, to diagnose this, if we push that limb more 
inward to adduct the limb, it's going to be very painful. Okay, here now, a little bit more distal on the limb. And we can see, after we have transected and reflected the lateral head of the triceps brachii, we can see the deep branch of the radial nerve here, and then the superficial branch of the radial nerve here. Okay, the superficial branch is going to be primarily cutaneous. The deep branch is going to be what supplies the muscles in the anabrachium. Do you recall which muscles it does supply? Make sure you do. Okay, so that superficial radial nerve is going to extend in the bovine as well as in as it did in the canine beyond the carpus down to the digits, but in the equine it does not extend beyond the carpus. Okay, so we have no radial innervation beyond the carpus in the horse. Okay, looking at the pectoral muscles, we have the descending pectoral muscle. Those are little lumps you see in the chest of the horse from the front. And then the transverse pectoral muscle, more going between the limbs, make up the superficial pectoral muscle. Remember that the pectoral nerves can be divided into cranial and caudal groups. The cranial group supplying primarily the superficial pectoralis muscles the caudal more the deep. Here we see the deep, sometimes referred to as the ascending pectoral muscle. In the horse we also have the subclavius as well as in the bovine, not as prominent. We looked at that with the neck. That subclavius muscle is actually part of the deep pectoralis muscle. Okay, So the function of these muscles, remember primarily, is to adduct the limb which is very important for standing. The descending is also going to advance the limb. The deep pectoralis muscles are going to retract the limb. And that's all I got for the shoulder.